Welcome to EdTech Monday. This is a special program put together oh, by to a Mastercard Monday. Foundation. This is support from Nest Africa oh. of National Discourse. Oh. We are live on the City Breakfast Show. We are also live on City FM's Facebook page. We're live on Nest Africa's Facebook page. And EdTech Monday is really part of a whole raft of things that the uh, foundation does to support young people, to support women, to bring more inclusive development. And every last Monday of the month, we bring you EdTech. Today, we're talking about coding for learners in Africa. And we know that in the near future, millions of jobs will be dependent on the digital revolution, ICT, digitalization. And uh, coding is really the primary method for communicating with a computer to achieve a goal or solve a problem. So coding is becoming the basic skill that the digital economy would require in the future that we want to create. So this morning, I'll be speaking to three I'll call them, they are very enthusiastic about coding or technology in different ways, right? And they'll be joining us live. So if you have any questions for them about how we can help young people learn more about coding, get the skill of coding and use that to create solutions to their own problems, I'll be happy to hear from you. I have Ernestina Edemapia. She's the founder of Ghana's Code Club uh, teacher. Ernestina is a Ghanaian social entrepreneur, founded the Ghana Code Club as an after-school program to teach children how to write computer programs. She also provides consultancy service for early childhood learning centers to develop their ICT curriculum. And Enesina was the first Ghanaian woman to make it to the BBC 100 most inspirational women. Enestina, good morning. Welcome to the show. Yes, I can hear you. Ed. All right, and since so if you can hear me, you want to check if your mic is on. We didn't hear what you said. I can see you are trying to speak. So make sure yes, your mic is on. I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, thank you. Uh, we'll also have uh, Florence Tofa. She's the uh, founder of Mobile Web Ghana. Now, Mobile Web Ghana is a technology and entrepreneurship hub based in Accra. Florence has more than a decade experience in the ICT for development sector, an alumnus of the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program and a partner of the American Spaces. Florence is also an alumnus of France Leadership Program and West Africa. She has led and implemented many women and youth empowerment projects and workshops since 2010. Florence, good to see you again. Good morning. Welcome to, Welcome to the show. 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 Good morning, Bernard. Thank you. All right, we're trying to solve the technical challenge we have. Florence, I see you're saying something. I, I really can't hear you. We'll check if, you're, if there's a challenge with your mic. But uh, we're also expecting Regina Honu. She's the founder of Surunko Academy. And uh, Surunko Academy is a leading technology coding and digital skills development center in Africa for young people. She's been ranked one of the top young 50 CEOs in Ghana and a technical and vocational education and training role model or TVET model by the Ministry of Education. She sits on the board of AFS International. Regina will join us shortly. And today we are trying to see what coding is and how coding can be entrenched. Uh, Kukui, I, I'm sure you're excited about this topic. Very, very excited. Um, very coding excited. is something, I, something I, I, I would love for all of my kids to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm interested to, to hear what they say. And, you know, in this day and age, our kids pick up things easily. We may see it as something, you know, quite complex, but for our children, they're in this age where this kind of technology is something they can eat. This, I think um, maybe they can unmute their microphones mm -hmm. and that will help us hear them a bit better. So All right, so and, and Asina, let me try again. Uh, welcome to the show, if you can hear me. Yes, thank you, Bernard. Can you hear me now? Hello, Anastina, if you can hear me, please unmute your mic so we can, we can hear you talk. I'm unmuted. Thank you, Bernard. Can you hear me now? Oh my goodness. I can right. hear you. So then. somehow I can't seem to hear. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. And Asina, go ahead. Yes. Hi. 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 All right, Enestina, so we can hear you now. So we can go ahead. Tell us. Oh, 
so this is a quite a, a difficult think, challenge. With the, with the, let me try with um, and uh, Florence and see if I'll, I'll get any like Florence. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hi, Bennett. Good morning. I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm very well. It's good to see you. Uh, tell me a bit more about yourself. Of course, I know you, but I'm sure our listeners would want to know a bit more about what you've been up to. I've known you've been at edtech space for a long time. Tell us a bit more about what you do. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, my name is Florence, as you mentioned. Uh, I lead an organization called Mobile Web Ghana. It's a technology and entrepreneurship hub based in Accra. We are passionate about helping people to learn digital skills and in particular to solve local problems. And we've been doing this for uh, almost about 12 years now and still counting. And uh, we are happy to be on the show to contribute what we've learned, the experience we are bringing on board to discuss the subject matter. Thank you. How did you get involved in technology? Because when I knew you at Legon, I, I didn't associate technology with you at all. I think we were in the same hall many, many years ago. I didn't think that you were going to become one of the leading faces of technology in Ghana. How did you transition from whatever you studied in Legon into this area? Uh, and it, it's the more reason why I'm passionate about this topic, meaning that in respect of your age, in respect of your career, you can still dive deep into technology because it is what is leading the world now. You know, when I was in Legon, uh, I did my service in Legon and I was employed in Legon. Uh, but one thing that struck me was that uh, when I was in secondary school, I used to post letters to my friends and it takes so many months to receive and then pay and then expect a, a, a reply some months later. So when I started working, I started using emails. I was so fascinated about getting instant response to my email. So my mind was, I was very curious, how come I get instant response? to my email to my and when i write 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 and when i Thank you. We have a challenge on the technical side of things. We'll try and fix it as we continue the show. Yes. So this program has been on every month for the past few months. Every last Monday of the month, we discuss technology and essentially tries to give you insights into how we can use technology to solve our problems. And we also deliberately try to use technology in the show so that you don't have to have them come into the studio. We want to talk to them using um, the internet. So sometimes we do have technical challenges. You need to forgive us for that. And of course, you can send us your thoughts and your experiences with technology. This morning, I'm going to be talking about coding. We've interviewed some young coders and we'll hear from them as the show goes on as well. We'll discuss the future of work. There's also an interview with uh, an alumni of the pre mess all on the show this morning. All right, Florence, I'm coming back to you. I wanted to take your, your quick thoughts on uh, a couple of things whilst we try and sort out Ernestina. So, uh, uh, Florence, we're discussing technology. We're talking about coding. Can you break down coding? What, what is coding and why is it important for mm -hmm. people to know this basic skill? So, Hello, in a layman's uh, sense, coding is just giving... Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. So coding is just giving uh, an instruction to a computer to, to process. So that is that is it about coding. So uh, just as I'm speaking English and you can hear me, the computer also needs uh, to be 
uh, processed in a certain language that the computer understands. So we have different programming languages. It's in a simple terms, a language that the computer understands, just giving order or instruction to the computer in a language that the computer can understand and give you your desired results. So that is coding. So it's almost like the basic way to communicate with the machine to the computer to, to solve problems. If it's this important, what is the earliest stage in which a child can be introduced to coding and how come it's not so widespread in our educational system? Uh, the earliest stage is you can start as early as four years, five years, uh, with basic uh, uh, fun programming uh, applications like Scratch, which I'm sure that uh, Tina will throw more light on it. And uh, like we all learn, my, I have a son who is uh, very young, like uh, like about three years, and he can speak uh, English and other languages. It means that if they are able to pick up certain relevant skills, they're able to speak, communicate, the same way they can be able to understand and program and also communicate with devices. We all know that lately, when we move around, kids are watching cartoons, kids are fascinated about all the things on the devices. Like we are giving them the products of cartoons. One of the things we should be doing is actually also giving them how they can also create their own world in that sense. And so it's very relevant and it's one of the things that we must do uh, in our various schools. So uh, my institution as well as uh, Tina's institution, we organize series of uh, coding classes for kids and we've seen that parents are uh, are jumping on board, parents are bringing their kids on board and we are excited, but it is not entrenched in our various, uh, in our various schools and that is where we should be heading to because it's very vital because now kids are so glued to the device, they must be creating, they must be solving, they must be creating their own world instead of just handing over the product to them. I see, but I noticed that a lot of the coding that kids get exposed to happens in private institutions like yours or trading academies like the one Ernestina and uh, Regina run, it doesn't seem to have become a mainstream in our educational sector yet, even though they only learn ICT. I wonder why that's the case. Is, is it that it's a specialized skill and then the average ICT teacher can't teach it and therefore you need bodies like yours to do the coding training? I think it's an era in which we are, and we need to build capacity. Like I mentioned, when you knew me in school, I studied psychology and sociology, I'm now into tech. And so most people right now, including the teachers, as well as uh, uh, the schools, public schools, including uh, uh, private schools as well, for, it's a new thing. Had it not even been for Corona, uh, some schools wouldn't have even done online uh, schooling before. So it, it's in the West where kids are thought it's integrated into curriculum and also in the house and they're encouraged to program. Here, it's something that is picking up. So it's taking a while. It's not catching up with the schools. And so, uh, there is more capacity building that needs to be done for teachers and for the schools as well to really understand. Mm. Apart from that, uh, you know, you cannot learn on paper. We, you, can, you need to do the practical aspect. And I think that, I mean, when I go to publish the code, <laughs> What are they going to use to code? What, what, what are the resources? You know, so those are some of the limiting factors that uh, is preventing the coding from actually uh, uh, place or increasing in the various uh, both public and, and private schools as well. Thank you very much. Let me go to Regina, and then I'll come to Ernestina. Regina, as I've already said, Regina Honu, we all know her, one of the uh, faces of technology in Ghana. Uh, CEO of the Sironko Academy, leading technology coding and digital skills and development center in Africa for young people, ranked among the top 50 CEOs in Ghana and a technical and vocational education role model. Regina, it's good to see you again. Good morning. Morning, Bernard. I hope you're well. Can you hear me? I'm fine. I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, even though we, we know a bit about you, tell, tell our audience more about what you've been up to and who you are. 
Okay, so I am a software developer by training, a tech enthusiast, and a gender advocate. Um, so I am committed first in bridging the gender gap in technology and also skilling young people so that you know they can develop solutions to the problems that they see around them. So we have been um, sort of developing the next generation of innovators and critical thinkers. So that's who I am and what I've been up to. I see. When did you get introduced to coding and technology? Was it whilst you were in Ashesi or was much before? Because you're almost like the poster girl for technology in Ghana. <laughs> At what point in your life did technology become part of your, your mainstay? So I had the interest very early. I think I was 12 years old when I wanted to go into technology. But I had no access, no training. It was actually in university. Um, that I started to develop on this skill. And that was quite unfortunate because imagine if I had access and opportunity at 12, what I would have done by the time I reached university. So I think this is one of the reasons that we're so passionate about getting children because we know that they have passion. Just like me, I was very interested then, but I just didn't have the resources, opportunity to learn up on that mm. Okay. All right, uh, let me come to Ernestina again to see if Ernestina will give me some luck. Ernestina, I, I don't know why it's so difficult. Can to you hear me, Bernard? Can you hear me? It's, loud, can and hear clear. it's loud and clear. It's loud and clear. I can hear you now. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for so, your persistence and your patience. Yes, it's a privilege to be here. <laughs> Tell us more about yourself. Yeah. Tell us more about yourself. Okay. So I'm Ernestina. I'm a Ernestina Pia. I'm a mother of two a virtual assistant who is now teaching her skills to Ghana Hood Club, which I founded in 2015. So our mission is to expose basic school children to fun and engaging platforms, mostly after regular school sessions. Um, children learn to program and to become creative with code. So I also have strong passion for the girl child. And so because of that, we have a few initiatives that have come up that's all about me for now why is it important to teach children in particular coding and technology in general why is it important to catch them young well it's important because um, computers has, have surrounded us everywhere children love to play with devices but do they understand um, what they are doing they need to understand because it will help them in a long way to become problem solvers. I see. So tell me more about your institution. Uh, you call it the, you run the Ghana Code Club as an after school yeah. program. Yeah. To learn how to write computer programs. What age do you start them with? And what level of skill do you impart to them? Well, so we start as early as um, four or five years. We start with, like Florence said, with uh, fun programs like Scratch Junior, Scratch uh, B-Boards, all these uh, robotic fun activities. We teach them algorithms, how to, and some other computer science principles, how to make animations. And they become very excited. Anytime they see that their codes are actually working like the animations they watch or the games they play. Mm, fantastic. Let me come to Regina now. R Regina, how do we make opportunities to learn code more accessible to young women and children in particular, and even people in, uh, with disabilities? What's the key okay. to getting them into coding? So I think the first, well, there are three key factors. So the first one is access. And by access, I mean you know, access to devices, um, and access to the infrastructure to be able to have the tools to learn and practice and hone their skills. The next one is cost. You know, the cost of being able to go online, it's a privilege for some. Um, and also the cost of being able to maintain the whole infrastructure and making sure that, you know, internet access becomes like a, a right, not um, a need, not a want. And then the final one is exposure and role models. So for young people, they need to see that it's possible. Um, and by exposing them to what computer science is and demystifying that whole, you have to be a shark, you have to be super smart, you know, will make it 
um, more engaging and fun for them. And with more models, just showing them others that have been able to do it. I mean, we, we've seen the power and the potential of young people seeing others that have come before them and have been able to excel and showing them that they don't have to limit themselves, but they can if they have the passion and the potential. Generally, when it comes to technology, it's almost like you have to be some mathematical wizard to do well in there. Is, is this true? Um, what, what, what are the basic things I need as a young child or as a girl or whoever to succeed in, in coding? So you definitely don't need to be a mathematical wizard. You don't have to have, you know, some extra strength. It's simply um, really understanding the basics, right? And understanding how to break down a problem and, and coming up with a solution for it. The thing about innovation is that it's not only one way. So we actually encourage different children with your different skill sets to try it and think about different ways of solving a problem. So, and, and like uh, Florence said, it's like a language, right? So we all learn different languages. We all learn different ways of communicating. So you don't have to have any special math skill. It doesn't require you to have, you know, any special IQ level. It's simply about solving a problem, breaking it down, you know, understanding what we call a language, you know, to be able to communicate to the computer. Anybody and everybody can do it. We want to now hear from a young coder who shared with us how they've been able to develop their skill at their age and what their experience has been. Let's take a listen to that. This is the EdTech Monday. It's brought to you by the MasterCard Foundation support from MEST. My guests are Regina Honu, founder of Sorunko Academy, Florence Stofa, founder of Mobile Web Ghana, and Ernest Tenaida Mapia, founder of the Ghana Code Club Teacher. Here is a quick sound bite of a, a young coder sharing their experience on the journey. Because I want to become an engineer in the future, I decided to abreast myself with coding to help me become the engineer I want to be. And I read online that there was a coding class called Ghana Code Club, which would really help me achieve my goals of being an engineer. And ever since I enrolled in Ghana Code Club, I've been making projects like a traffic light, a guitar out of cardboard, an instrument which uses a banana to play, and many more. We use technology tools like Scratch, which enables us to create games and cartoons that no one can with any normal app. And from there, we use the Revolution Robotics Kit, and we use our Juno Kit, which helps us create machines like the alarm systems and traffic lights. We also use tools like the Makey Makey Kit, which enables us to make music out of things like the cardboard using the alligator cables and then the mail-to-mail -mail cables. The most challenging thing for me about coding is the laptops. The kind of laptop I use doesn't make me feel comfortable when coding, while the higher spec laptops are much expensive in this part of the world. Because of that, my parents can't afford to buy the kind of laptops that I need. And also, because there is poor internet connection, my laptop doesn't get the amount of speed it needs to search up or post my projects on the internet and this is one of the major problems i have when coding what gets me excited is once you are done with your project you feel so happy and you feel on top of the world because you realize that you can create more things than what you have created and it empowers you too at first when i was in school i was bad at it but ever since i came to ghana code club i've i've learned more and i know more and i'm also excited for my future because I know that even if I do not get employed, employed in the future, I will still get something to do. I can create my own game and sell to the TV companies to place on their TV system. So when someone is bored of watching TV all the time, the person can play my game and feel excited to play it. That was a young coach. And Estina, I, I'm sure you, I could see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of your. This is you create a game and give to the TV stations to put on your TV set. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, how long did you have to work with this young man to get to where he's gotten to? Oh, I think he's been around for not more than four months, three months ago. Wow. So yes. Uh, how how old? 
Um, the, his age, he's, um, I think he's about 13, 12 or 13. 13. And you've been working with him for four months and he's already talking about creating yes. for, for TV stations. <laughs> well, I can see the passion in his eyes. So that's one thing about coding. Sometimes you have a problem, a particular problem you would want to solve. So maybe that is the reason why you have to, to engage um, to code, to solve that particular problem. Like he is saying, he wants to make games and sell to TV stations or to become an engineer. You know, it's... What skills do, do these things require? Because I'm told you problem solving skills, creativity, critical thinking. Does the educational system give the young people these raw material skills to allow them to be successful in coding? Or do you have to work on them to, to get them to be able to, to do the level of coding you expect? Well, so um, to my best of knowledge, uh, GES has integrated coding about two years ago, but I'm not sure they are actually coding because they don't have the right infrastructure, like Regina said, and the, um, all those resources. So we, we, we hear, I mean, like the private um, coding institutions are trying our best to get these resources to engage the kids with, introduce them to the tools and the platforms they need to, um, you know, code and make their ideas come out live. We also are preparing curriculum to help some of the early learner, learner uh, institutions. We have both plug and unplug activities so that in case you don't have computers, access to computers and maybe most resources that require you to be online, you can use it offline as well. Mm. So uh, let me come to Florence. You, as we know, you, you started this post-university, yet you agree that we should start this much, much earlier. Now that we are in an era of free SHS, should we also have free coding where you can say for every person by the time they reach SHS 3 should know some basic coding. And if that's the recommendation, what do you think it should require so that every graduate from SHS would have some knowledge of coding? What would it take to do that? And thank you, Bernard. And uh, I just want to uh, just add to what you asked uh, uh, Tina. Uh, do we think that kids already have these skills? And I think that naturally kids are curious, like three year old, four year old, it's, it's an innate thing, like they're asking questions, they, are, they, are, they really want to like, and then as they go along the line and they grow old, then these things are either killed or terminated along the line. So naturally, if only we can tap, there's the more reason when we start young, it means that they already have these skills. They are curious, they want to like the gentleman who presented and he said that I wasn't good in tech, Probably because it wasn't practical, probably because uh, he wasn't introduced in a way that was fun. And so kids naturally have all these skills. And I think that, as I've mentioned, it just answers your question that these things need to be started as early as possible, free coding for, 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 for everyone, for every child, to level the flame fields for, flame fields for everyone, whether you have money or not, you have access to uh, free coding classes in your schools with the right infrastructure. And this is what I'll advocate for. I mean, swapping from uh, uh, BA to technology field, it's exciting. Like every time I'm solving problem, I'm thinking, what project should I in, uh, implement? What should I do? It's really exciting. Like it's life is not boring. Like every time, like even though it's challenging, you're excited about the things that you're doing. And I think that irrespective of uh, what you are doing. This is the future. Whether you are, I tell people when I do training program, whether you are selling a sachet water, you are doing, there is an element of technology that you can use to change the dynamics of your business. And this is why uh, at least everyone should be given opportunity to learn some form of coding or to even understand. So now when I have my phone, I know what is coming. I know that when I receive a call, it's just 
going through some loop, going through, and, and kids in the kindergarten, they're already doing this thing. They are looping rhymes, like, Ray, Ray, go away, go and come another day. They are looping. It's a form of coding. They are going through sequence. It's a form of coding. They are going through algorithms, like, when you wake up, you brush your teeth, you put on, they're already going through some form of coding in their daily life. It's just, it's just putting them in the room and teaching them that loop. All that you are doing is exactly what the computer also does. It's just looping, rhyming, doing these things in schools, and it becomes fun, fun to them. And, and, and I would certainly advocate that, look, we should, in one way or the other, make coding free for everyone. Everybody should at least have an experience. Mm. And now it's not to be as difficult as it is. Now there is drag and drop, like what the kids learn, like animations, like my, my, my child, when he started learning scratch, you just uh, record your voice and put into the, uh, the application you are developing. And it's exciting for him to know, look, I can record my voice and then I'm playing something and it's moving. It's exciting. And I think that, I think that is really the way to go. It is the future. More jobs will require, I think almost every job will require an IT, IT skills in the future, including the one selling gobe by the roadside. We will say uh -huh. that where you are coming, book gobe online. Oh, yes, it, it's the future. And, and I think that we shouldn't sit aloof, we shouldn't sit on concern, and uh, we should try and change things. Mm. I'm sure the education minister will be happy hearing this. He seems quite interested in technology. So maybe we'll, we'll uh, send a communique after this interview to him. <laughs> but let me come to Regina. Regina, you've been involved in training uh, girls how to code for many years, and you do, you do it in some of the most deprived communities. What are some of the success stories? How did that knowledge you give to these girls in these deprived communities change their life and their outlook? Okay, so let me give you a recent example of uh, a project that we did um, somewhere in the Afajatu South District. And the challenge there was, you know, a lot of the girls were getting pregnant. So by 12, 13, even with free SHS, you know, they didn't opt for that. They still wanted to um, go out um, because it's also an economic challenge, like they needed money. So during our trainings, first of all, we exposed them, breaking the mindset that the only things that they are good for is, you know, just what, their community is showing them and showing them that they can do so much more. So they learned all the different uh, tech skills. For some of them, and a lot of Ghanaian women are entrepreneurs, so a lot of the young ladies, they had all these entrepreneurial ideas, but they didn't know how to shape it, how to form it. Um, and so with a mixture of um, technical skills, human-centered design, they were able to really break down the problems that they, they had and come up with solutions in terms of an entrepreneurial venture. So we were really blown away. Even some of them address some of the social issues, so like teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, and they came up with an interesting tech solution to address those challenges. Now, after the winning, for some of the girls, they immediately connected to jobs. So uh, an example is one young lady who there was a, a, a census that was happening, an organization was doing data collection. And previously, she couldn't have benefited from that opportunity because she didn't even know how to use these devices. But right after, she was able to connect with her first job and, and now start doing data collection, data analysis, you know, for the organization. And we're talking about um, a young lady in the Fajoso South District, and she couldn't, be, she could barely speak English, but, you know, she was now able to use these tools to be able to communicate, collect data, analyze it, and send it back. So these are some of the examples of, you know, the initial impact of technology, right, you know, after, and the training was for six weeks. So right after you can immediately connect the dots and use the skills to empower yourselves, you know, to make some money and to create something in the future. Mm. Let's talk about the future of work. And I'm staying with you, Regina. What does the future of coding education look like in Africa? Oh, that is a very good question. I think uh, what we really need to have a conversation about is first infrastructure. Leveling the pain field such that access is available to all, right? Because these are still some of the main issues. So we have infrastructure, and we have the cost once again. We also have to build the human capital. So um, I know there are several initiatives, like you said, um, this government is very interested in STEM, but we still need to do more, you know, to get teachers to come up to the level of being able to train and, uh, and teach children technology and, and, and all these different skills. So the future, I really believe, looks bright. If governments are more intentional, especially African governments, and there was a report by um, 
UNESCO on World Food Skills Day that says three out of four young people lack the skills. You know, so I think there's an urgent call now for governments to really be more intentional, you know, especially in also introducing digital skills because you have numeracy, you have literacy, and the next key one is digital skills for the future of work. So I'm hoping governments will come together to look at, at um, developing infrastructure, to look at building human capital, and the last important piece, to open up opportunities so that when young people have these skills, they're able to do more with it when the environment is also enabling. Because remember that other countries that have been able to spearhead um, technical skills and all the initiatives in technology are also supported by different public-private initiatives. So we also need to create an enabling environment where we build a lot more local content and the market is also understanding and ready to accept all these technology innovations. And then we are able to thrive in that way. Let me ask the same question to Florence. Where do you see the future of coding in the African continent? Um, I see it as uh, gradually taking off. Uh, but like uh, my colleague mentioned, uh, we need a lot of work to be done. Uh, I think that one of the areas that we need to also work on is the capacity building, like build teachers' capacity, build, of course, we, we, we are saying we need infrastructure, we need laptop. I remember at a point we had free laptop for, for students. Uh, and the question is, have their capacity been built to use the laptop to create things? Uh, is one of the questions. So, uh, whilst we are advocating for good infrastructure, I would also advocate that, look, we really need to also focus on building the human resource that is needed to create this innovation, to uh, create simple applications to solve uh, simple pro uh, problems that we are facing, both in all areas, in entertainment, in health, in education. We need to really build capacity in coding. And so this is done it will really be tough. Uh, and I think that and the capacity building should be built across board. And uh, uh, because until people understand why coding is necessary, until people understand why they should get involved, it will always be a battle that we have to fight in the future. And just like uh, internet, when it came, people were like other people were hooked on, they were developing things, they were taught their capacity were built. We are still, it still feels like, look, in some areas in Ghana, it still feels like, look, we are now providing access to internet. And now that now social media is big, now we are concerned what are our kids watching. Like the last time we had a social media training, like the top 10 sites that the youth visit, it was really very scary to see that, look, what they visit is either they are doing other things, doing other things, but we really need to build their capacity to say the internet is here. What can you do with the internet to improve your life economically and also for, for the girl child and for females as well? How can they take advantage of the internet, including uh, uh, coding and other programs that are available? And mm. so that is what I'll say about the future mm. of work. And Estina, you're almost like my consultant for education when it comes to mm. coding. A number of people have been asking for your contact and I'll probably share that at the end. But my question to you is, what needs to be done going forward to make coding an integral part of our educational system? Looking at the fact that you've succeeded in getting a lot of young people to be interested in coding through your institution. So clearly, you know a thing or two about how to make kids excited about coding. What are your recommendations for making coding an integral part of our educational system? How should we go about it? Well, first of all, we should all have in our minds that technology will forever be a part of our lives now and in the future. So um, with a lot more people gaining access to technology, coding should be considered a basic skill to enable consumers understand how their devices function. Like I said, kids play with um, mobile phones, computers a lot. But do they really understand the games they so much love, how it's made of? They don't. That's why I think we have to actually let them um, get the understanding of how all these technologies are made. Then again, um, I wanted to add to what Florence was saying earlier, that 
Africa is a young continent. So for us here in Africa, um, with the vibrant youth ecosystem, adapting coding as a basic skill will enable a paradigm shift to move from being tech consumers to tech creators. And us having the ability to create, manage, and scale solutions um, to our everyday problems is very key. So that is, that's what I'm trying to say that coding should be integrated in the curriculum. Resources should be made available. The infrastructure should be um, put in place so that kids, every child, will have access to these tools. This is EdTech Monday. It's brought to you by the MasterCard Foundation with support from MEST. My guests are three ladies deeply involved in technology. Ernestina Apia is the founder of the Ghana Code um, Club. And uh, essentially, they have found a way of getting young people excited and knowledgeable about coding in very exciting ways. She was listed among the BBC's most influential or inspirational women in 2015. BBC's 100 most inspirational women. Regina Honu is the CEO of Sorunko Academy, a leading technology coding and digital skills development center in Africa for young people. She's also been ranked one of the top young 50 CEOs in Ghana and a TVET role model by the Ministry of Education. And I also have Florence Toffa, who is the founder of Mobile Web Ghana, an alumnus of the University of Ghana, over a decade experience in ICT for development sector and implemented many women and youth empowerment projects since 2010. I'm going to now turn my attention to uh, a quick vo voice uh, clip. Now, in order to create more decent jobs for young Africans, the MasterCard Foundation and MEST have been training young people out of tertiary institutions how to code and develop software through the pre-MEST program. We spoke to some of the graduates of the program to share how the skills they've learned impacted their career journeys. Here's a short excerpt. I am Chris Tabelte, a software developer at Texor Limited, and I was privileged to be part of the Sorunco cohorts of the PMS program. Um, being in that experience gave me the needed skill for my environment. It gave me the confidence I needed in coding knowing that what, can, what I can do can be beneficial to people out there in solving their problems. It gave me the hands-on skill and the practicality I needed. Uh, from, so, so it moved me from um, concept to solution and gave me the boost I needed in pursuing my career. All right, so that was one voice. I thought we were going to have a bit more. Well, as, as, as we wrap up, I'm going to ask uh, all of you, the things you do, is it open to the public? So let me start with uh, Ernestina. A lot of people have been asking, we want to enroll our kids in your club. What do they need to do? Do they need to write a letter of application? Is there a number they can call? Is there a website? How do, how do people get part of what you do? Let me start with Ernestina. Okay, so um, we have the private the private coding sessions and the one open to the public. We actually, um, we have partnerships with ATC Ghana, Samsung Ghana, who have uh, digital centers all over rural Ghana. So we are managing from Ashanti region in, in Jamasi, Takwa. We are in the Western North, um, Greater Accra here, and then, Central region, Swedro. So those are actually free. You walk in and it's targeted towards school children. So kids come there after school sessions and are being taught how to code. Um, but here in Accra, we also have the private tuitions. So on Saturdays, we have one that we are doing in collaboration with uh, Florence. So North Legon, and we have a showman estate here. Um, that people can register online from our website, ghanacodeclub.org. You register, and then you, any Saturday you want to, you just walk in, and mm. then we, we start. I'm to... sure people will prefer a phone number or some WhatsApp number. You know, going online is a bit technical. So if you can share a number with us. Yeah, that... you can call 
0265-270825. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Regina, what about you? How can people get in touch and be part of what you are doing? Okay, so we're currently running our summer coding classes uh, for children at the academy in East Ligon. So we have different courses. So we're starting from five years old all the way up to 17 um, years old. You can go to our website, shonkoacademy.com, or you can reach us on 057-454-1522. Um, 057 454 1522. So, there you know, you can enroll your children in any of our kids' program. For our adult programs, which we run uh, a lot to, like um, the one that we also run with MESS with our alumni that share the voice note, we run it in partnership with Hubs All Across. So, if you go onto our website, you can find more information about how you can enroll your child and then yourself in learning coding. Everybody can get involved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what about Florence? I, I'm told you do some of these trainings as well. Where can people get in touch to benefit? Yes, Karen, so we have a program in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy. It's called Technology and Women Empowerment Program, where we run STEM programs. It's online, so where you go to our website, mobilewebgana.org, you'll find information about the programs that we are running in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy. And uh, it happens online. It's a virtual program, and we occasionally we have a, a physical program to hear at Mobile Web Ghana, we have STEM program, Get Ready for Work Series and Mentorship program, mostly for women and also for the youth. And uh, we also have a program called African Digital Schools that will run across the continent. Uh, like it's, it's a three days program that happens every year and uh, you can learn, choose from social media, to uh, Power BI data science, and it's all basically free. And you can also go online, African Digital Skills Conference.org, and you can register for that program as well. If you want to reach us, you can call us on our office mobile 0577 6 0577660616. And mm. thank you to be able to let, join. Let me conference. read a few quick comments for you, and then I will um, take your concluding comment. Uh, Emmanuel Dogbe Caesar says, "Good morning, Bernard. I would like to. I want to know if they have a guide or a book online that will make coding simple for adults who are age 25 or above, so we can also download from the internet and begin coding." So this is somebody asking for a self-taught coding system. And the person is above 25, so adult education or mature student type of coding. This is a concerned teacher, Frederick Usubuachi. Good morning. Yes, ICT is in our SHS now as a core and elective. Not all schools do the elective because of infrastructure and teachers. Uh, they don't have enough teachers to handle the subject. In the elective ICT, which is examinable by WIAC since 2014, coding is part of the syllabus, but the frame is settled on QBAIC. I don't know what that means. Others in the syllabus are database, HTML, and spreadsheet. I'm sure you guys understand this. I, I don't understand what he's saying. He's basically talking about some things, but maybe you can comment mm -hmm. on that. And another adult is asking if they can join. So uh, I don't know. Maybe let me start with Ernestina. Two adults are asking if they can join. One wants to know if there's somewhere they can go online as a mature student, age 25 and above. I don't know if it's possible. And then if you can comment also on the issue of coding and ICT in secondary schools, Ernestina. All right, so with the adults joining, we have a, a program in collaboration with the Mobile Web Ghana that is headed by Florence Tofa. So the adults can register through her website. So, um, but for that, we like to focus more on the kids. We like to focus on kids. So if you come to us, it's, it's children's affair. And then, um, what was the other question, please? No, he just was asking, uh, maybe just giving us information about secondary school and uh, ICT. He says it's examinable, but they use something called QBAIC. I don't know what that is. And that they teach things like database, HTML, and spreadsheet. So maybe I think the question is, that the ICT that they teach in secondary schools, how relevant is it for coding? 
I think that's the the the. Yes, the, I think those are also the basics. Just as we are doing HTML is a basic for web development that we we all are engaged in. So HTML is a good thing. The Q I don't know whether I said uh, what basics. The QB I really don't have an idea. It is, let me try, Regina. Any quick comments on the question, Regina? Yes. So it's Q basics. I think we need to bridge the gap because. The curriculum is not evolving as fast as technology is evolving, right? So I think that is where the chance also is because Q basics is like really old. So I feel like maybe we should figure out how to be refreshing the curriculum as things are changing because there are new programming languages coming up, new frameworks coming up. And um, so, yes, so that I think is the challenge. They're on the right path, but some of the technology is a little bit uh, let me read another comment from Deborah for it that uh, coding is indeed an essential skill, especially now when most activities depend on technology. It's important to expose our kids at an early age as they have an open and curious mind at that stage. It also helps them acquire analytical and problem solving skills as they grow, which are important traits the country needs now. The Institute of ICT Professionals Ghana is one such institution pushing the agenda and penetrating to the public schools, which is being left behind. Hashtag coding, hashtag edtech Monday. Uh, this one all coming in from Minister Clinton. Coding is indeed an essential skill, especially now when most activities depend on technology. Um, and then Kweku wants to thank us for the sign language interpretation for deaf people. Keep it up. I'm really enjoying this program. Thanks to all of you. I'll take a minute each. Let me start with Florence. What's your concluding thoughts on a morning discussing coding? and its role in national development. Florence? As I mentioned, coding is the future. Coding is a useful and a relevant skills that we need. And uh, as one of the uh, your viewers mentioned, it's a problem solving skills. It's, uh, and now in this age, children want to learn fun things. And it's the right time to introduce them to coding. I mean, when I started, my coding lessons at MEST, and uh, it was two years rig rigorous studies at MEST, and I have to start all the way from HTML, understanding the logic, the loop. It was really like a tough, a tough journey for me, but I was so determined that, look, I'm going to do this, and I'm happy that I did it. And so, but for the children who have less stress, this is the right time to teach them coding skills because. Uh, Several reports, IFC report mentioned 230 million jobs will be created in Ghana by 2030, and this will require at least basic skills in IT. And we don't want to leave these children behind in the future, and we want to get them hooked, we want to get them introduced to coding, and this is the right stage to introduce coding to them. And, Great. Let uh, me th thank, thank parents, you. Let me yes. Thank you. Let me take Anastina's last comments before I end with Regina. Anastina, your final thoughts? Okay, so for a sustainable solution to ensure we integrate practical tech education in our school system, we need investments in infrastructure. First, a lot of uh, schools in Ghana do not have basic ICT facilities. We are thankful to companies like the ATC Ghana and Samsung Ghana for establishing ICT centers in all these communities that enables children to have access. We need more co corporate um, organizations on board. Thank you. Thank you. Regina, I'll give you the last word. Okay, so we're talking about the future of work. Technology is just not a nice to have, but it's a must have because now we're going to talk about numeracy and the most essential thing, digital skills. So I think you should all give your children, especially a digital advantage by making sure that they learn to code and give yourself opportunities to thrive in whatever industry by making sure that you upskill yourself with digital and technology skills. Thank you very much, Regina Honu, founder of Surunko Academy, and Esinaida Mapia, founder of the Ghana Code Club, teacher, and Florence Tofa, founder of the Mobile Web Ghana. We've been speaking to them on coding and its role in releasing learners from Africa. Program is EdTech Monday brought to you by the MasterCard Foundation with support from Meltwater. And that's all we have time for. Thank you, ladies. Have a great one. Thank you. Well, that's all we have time for. for